All right, guys, what is going on? Welcome back. Book two of Lorthus. Lorthus. I don't know. But in this one, we will talk about Sanctuary. So this is going to be great because I feel like I played the, as you guys know, I played the, you know, the, the Diablo 4 beta. Not really knowing how exactly the humans got, got there. Because one of you commented, that you know it was actually loved in Anarius that created the whole thing and I I figured out hey that was pretty cool that's pretty epic so in this one it looks like we're gonna deep dive more into how everything was actually started again this is this whole series it is great for a newcomer like me to really get invested into the story into the lore into these characters into the world with that being said Diablo 4 let's see how Sanctuary got created let's go You've returned. Yes, we have. Lyle this time. Get your snacky snacks, well, guys. Choice for this dark story. It's time for a story. The shadows will seem longer when it's done. Before we talk to Anu oh, 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 oh. and Tathamet, the high heavens and the burning hells, yep. and all who reside there, embroiled in the eternal conflict. Now let us speak of the creation of Sanctuary and our creators, Inarius and Lilith. Angel and demon. Here we go. Our father and mother. The eternal conflicts raged on, endless and all consuming. <clears throat> Led by the Angiris Council, the angelic forces fought countless battles against the armies of the seven demon lords. Dude, this will make an epic movie. Creation. Though the high heavens often defeated their adversaries, they also failed to destroy them. Allowing evil to return again. What the again, hell? Really? Again. How is that possible? Unrelenting. Both sides claimed victories. Both suffered crippling defeats. Mm. The conflict was a never ending slaughter. Many of these battles were fought in Pandemonium. The plane set to be formed from the violent death of Anu and Tathamet, where the heart of creation lay. The mountain-sized artifact that would come to be known as the World Stone, housed within the Pandemonium Fortress. Any who control the World Stone would have the power to create new worlds, or unmake them with a thought. A desirable and dangerous prize indeed. Wow! It became the focus of the eternal conflict. Over the eons, the Pandemonium Fortress changed hands many times. It became a strange place. Embodying the warped reality of Pandemonium as a whole, a structural and liminal place, mm. affected by the high heavens and burning hells alike. So Sanctuary Angels is and demons too numerous to count have fallen at its gates. Sanctuary is like in over Pandemonium. And over again, this endless cycle caused Inarius, advisor to the Angiris Council, and under Tyriel's command to eventually conclude that the war could never be won. And he resolved to abandon it. Mm. Elsewhere, Lilith, daughter of hatred, was arriving at a similar conclusion. On her father Mephisto's role in the eternal conflict, Lilith once wrote, my father is content to fight the same battles and the same foes while everything turns to ashes. The war will never be won so long as he and his brothers lead. There is an end to it, but fools like my father are too blind to see it. Inarius and Lilith, angel and demon. Separated by a vastness in distance and experience that is difficult to comprehend, they came to the same conclusion. Hmm. They must escape the eternal conflict. I wonder if the cosmos had ever contemplated such an unholy alliance and divine union. I wonder if creation shuddered in horror and awe as Inarius and Lilith gathered others to their cause, fellow renegades seeking escape from the ceaseless fighting. The details of their meeting, like so much of our history, is obscure. Oh, that's cool how like it transitions into like color. But the great Herodric scholar Deckard Kane tells us of Inarius, wounded or marooned in the Pandemonium Fortress, meeting with Lilith. Really? Lilith was not spared the hatred of her father, Mephisto. And from time immemorial, 
had awaited an opportunity to rebel. So they're like, they're like Romeo and Juliet. For the first time, combatants in the eternal conflict Bro, look at the, set aside their differences. Look at this art. Also formed a union. This is incredible. It's difficult to imagine, but legends tell us that Inarius and Lilith forged an alliance that would alter the course of the war, reality itself, and all of existence. Inarius and Lilith pledged themselves to their joint cause of escaping the eternal conflict. United in purpose, both resourceful and wise in their way, they managed to gain control of the World Stone and hide it from the watchful eyes of the heavens. And really? The hells. Working together, how did they hide they a mountain? Shifted the World Stone into a pocket dimension, hiding it from the opposing powers of the eternal conflict. Ah. There, they used its extraordinary power to shape a new world, a refuge free from war. Free from unending strife. Bro, the art is so good. The renegade angels and demons came together to create new life. And the nature of the eternal conflict changed. The joining of the opposing natures within these firstborn made beings unlike any before. Beautiful abominations called Nephilim. Mm. From which humanity would one day descend as inheritors of both lineages. The birthrights of the first Oh, so humans are descendants of Nephilim. To resist the evil of the burning hells and to defy the dominion of the high heavens. Because of this, many of the angels and demons who rebelled with the Lithan and Arius <gasps> feared what these children might become. Bro, look at this art. Look at the this art. If children constrain even the strongest of allies, and it seems that angels and demons are not immune to this simple truth. Surely, Inarius and Lilith could not have foreseen the cosmic consequences of their actions. Inarius was alarmed when he realized that his children might surpass both angels and demons in potential. The other angels and demons fought fiercely over what should be done, whether to spare the Nephilim or exterminate them. The descent between the two groups alarmed Inarius, who called for a period of reflection. Mm. Lilith, driven into a mad frenzy by the threat of her children's extinction, ruthlessly murdered each and every renegade angel and demon, leaving only Inarius to discover the carnage she had wrought. Dude. Horrified by the loss of his comrades at Lilith's hand, Inarius became enraged. But still, he could not kill Lilith. Instead, he banished her from the sanctuary they had created together. Inarius then attuned the World Stone to diminish the powers of the Nephilim over time, and disappeared in the aftermath. As their strength faded generation by generation, they came to resemble mortals. No longer angelic or demonic, simply human. Mm. As their power diminished, so too did their collective memory, until only legends of what came before remained. It is said that the firstborn remained immortal and undying as humankind took shape, giving rise to the cultures, kingdoms, and tribes of sanctuary, before themselves fading into myth. Now you know, the birth of our world and our wow. inheritance, demonic and divine. Wait, wait, hold on, wait. The eternal Go back for a second. attuned the world stone to He said something about the firstborn. No longer angelic or demonic. Hold on, hold simply on. Human. As their power diminished, so too did their collective memory, until only legends of what came before remained. It is said that the firstborn remained immortal and undying as human. Okay, the firstborn remained loyal and undying. Okay, so that was the first necromancer, I believe. Time took shape, giving rise to the cultures, kingdoms, and tribes of sanctuary. Yeah, cause that their son, uh, to myth. their son that Lil that Lilith was looking for. Now you know, the birth of our world. Oh, ah, so he wasn't affected. Demonic and divine. The eternal conflict that rages ceaselessly in each of us. Think on that, young scholar, until we meet again. None of us is above sin or immune to evil seduction. True. Even the most righteous may fall. Given the right push in the wrong direction. Ooh. Ooh, that was a bar. Ooh, that was a bar. Let me hit that again. 
Even the most righteous may fall, given the right push in the wrong direction. <laughs> Bro, like that kind of reminded me of uh, Heath Leather. Heath Ledger. Uh, Heath Leather's. Uh, why do I keep saying Heath Le Leather? Heath Ledger's uh, Joker in uh, The Dark Knight. I mean, he, where he said, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, you see, uh, madness is like gravity. All it takes is a little push. <laughs> bro, that reminded me, oh, bro, that reminded me so much of that. That's so true. Wow. Okay, so that's how Sanctuary got created. It was Lilith and Narius using the world's, I want to say world stone, like the little world, uh, was it the world stone? World stone, and like they hit it in the pocket dimension. And because of these Nephilim being squandered in both angels and demons, just like uh, what is it called in Fortnite? Uh, because we saw kind of like the same thing in like the Underworld series with uh, Kate Beckins Beckenstein, Beckenstein. Uh, well, what is it? Uh, for vampires and werewolves like those that unification means kind of means that they're stronger than you know both hmm, i wonder if underworld if you got any kind of inspiration from that from the album with that or if it's just something just in folklore with unifications of these uh you know entities these demonic and angelic entities Who knows? i mean it would make sense that you know combining something would mean that you know it's far superior than one or the other that it came from originally makes sense makes sense it's science all that wow so that's how it got created hmm and but why couldn't well i'm guessing because anarius still loved lilith that's why he couldn't kill her but it seems like in this in diablo 4 like he's coming to finish the job so that's that's what makes me think that Lilith has ulterior motives. She doesn't just want to, you know, free her children or whatever, whatnot. It makes me sound like she has ulterior motives because with the prime evils coming to Sanctuary and her looking for her son. I mean, she could use him to, you know, deal with them. But at the same time, I mean, Anarius, he wants to find her and kill her, so maybe he knows something we don't but at the same time when we met him in the church he wasn't really doing anything like he was still exiled exiling himself you know like luke skywalker luke skywalker so, i don't know i have to see i haven't finished the campaign so i mean eventually in time i will find out guys if you guys enjoyed that you know you already know what to do like comment share and subscribe ah <sighs> man this is awesome i hope I hope Blizzard keeps doing things like this. Keeps putting out content for newbies coming into the Diablo series. This is great. This is great. Take care. Bye-bye.